Peaky Blinders Mastermind is like watching a baseball game that only gets exciting in the bottom of the ninth. It's a puzzle game set against the clock that unfortunately only begins to hit its stride as your time of it runs out. While introducing some fresh time bending and puzzle mechanics, it regularly fails to combine them into a satisfying mix. A challenging final couple of chapters ultimately save Mastermind, but never quite elevates it to the excitement of its source material. Based on the hit BBC crime drama, Peaky Blinders Mastermind takes place prior to the events of Season 1 as the Shelby family, also known as the Peaky Blinders, attempt to assert their dominance over the small heath area of Birmingham. The story revolves around a conspiracy that the Peaky Blinders are at the centre of as a web of violence, deceit and revenge is uncovered. It's by no means a riveting tale, but a serviceable one with comic book panel-like cutscenes that glues its puzzle box levels together. There are 10 missions in total that took me around 4 or 5 hours to complete on my first playthrough. Most most of which take place in the cobblestone streets under the shadows of brick warehouses of industrial 1919 Birmingham. The atmosphere of the show is well reproduced in the environments, even if some of the levels fail to stand out from one another due to the reuse of assets. Each of these missions consists of completing a series of objectives within a time limit while controlling one of the six playable members of the gang. These include the scampish Finn who can crawl through small gaps and open windows, the burlish Arthur can kick down doors and brawl with enemies, and the cunning Ada can distract police so others can pass by. These abilities is off a variety for each character, but ultimately all boil down to the same one press button prompt to interact with items. The objectives can occasionally produce satisfying moments where you manage to successfully sync up the gang's actions, but at the same time a lot of these can fall flat, especially when certain scenarios are reproduced more than once. The main gameplay consists of puzzle solving mixed with some very light stealth mechanics as some anachronistic indie rock soundtracks your steps. The idea is to get each of your protagonists in the right place at the right time to aid each other, whether that be using a lever to open a door, or by beating up a guard so that characters unable to fight can pass through. This is mainly achieved through trial and error though, rather than actual planning. You'll largely be moving a character to a point in the level where they can't progress, then using the rewind mechanic to get another to a point where they can assist the first character. The issue is that there's no real penalty for rewinding. So if you take a wrong step or get caught in the enemy's cone of vision, it's no big deal. It's a bit like playing chess against an opponent who allows you to go back a few turns if you think you made a mistake. It can be a little unrewarding, especially in the early hours where it feels like an overextended tutorial at times, and only offer a couple of head scratching moments to earn satisfaction from. It's a real shame that it takes so long to ramp up, because when all the cogs eventually go into motion, Peaky Blinders Mastermind becomes a completely different experience, and one that provides an enjoyable challenge. Mission 8 was the turning point for me, that's where things got a lot more interesting. Up until then, you're only controlling two or three characters at once for the vast majority of your time, and mainly in very similar looking locations. You're regularly given simple puzzles to solve such as open this door or pull this lever while sidestepping past a dozy guard, which quickly becomes dull and repetitive. In Mission 8 though, elements of Tommy Shelby's psychological mindset are brought into play in interesting ways, as he is haunted by his experience serving in the First World War. It forces you to play this specific level slightly differently to others, and favours the stealth elements over its core puzzle box mentality. The same can't be said for the final two missions, but they take place on a much grander scale. This is where I I found most of my fun with Mastermind. The main reason why these two sprawling maps are so good is that they require you to use upwards of five members of the gang for the first time, syncing them up to create chain reactions throughout the city. These puzzles were more challenging and coordinating everyone became much less of a cakewalk than previously, so much that I had to rewind several times and rethink my strategy. Even when eventually completing it, I barely scraped a bronze medal time, which had me eager to go back and try again to somehow shave over nearly a minute off to get the gold rank. This medal system, along with a few customarily littered collectible pocket watches, offers a level of replayability to each mission, albeit a very limited amount. Mastermind saves the best till last, and the final mission requires you to set off around Small Heath and split up your team to get the job done. It cranks up the difficulty slightly without ever becoming obtuse and wraps up the solid, though not surprising story in a satisfying way. These last two levels are what I wanted Peaky Blinders Mastermind to be for its entirety, a challenging set of puzzle boxes that uses the whole gang set against against the backdrop of mystery and intrigue. It's therefore unfortunate that you only get about an hour or so of that at the very end. 
For the majority of its runtime, Peaky Blinders Mastermind is a puzzle game with unique ideas implemented in uninspiring ways. Its story and tone holds the levels together in a solid but unspectacular way that neither let down its source material nor build interestingly on it. Once it all starts coming together in the final two missions and you get to use your entire team together to accomplish complex objectives, it becomes a genuine challenge laced with enjoyment and I was left wanting more. I just wished that it hadn't taken so long to get there. If you want to check out more of Peaky Blinders Mastermind, why not take a look at this gameplay?